So my name is Catherine Walker and um, I'm currently based in Birmingham. I work as a teaching fellow um, in geography, working on um, research projects that focus mostly on young people and uh, responses to um, climate change. It's great to be able to uh, talk to um, young people because I guess young people are very much at the heart of my um, what I research about. Um, I'm really interested in how children and then uh, adolescents, young people, um, respond to uh, messages about the environment, respond to um, messages about potentially how the environment is at risk, how it's changing, but also how there's much to celebrate in our environments. And there's um, the beauty of, of, um, of the natural world. Um, and so I'm really interested in how children and young people um, are learning about these things, what, what you're learning about in schools, but also how you make connections between everyday experiences, you know, what you see on your way to school or on your way around your community, and those um, messages about potentially climate change, how, how our climate's changing, etc. So um, I'm interested in, in just how children and young people growing up in this age where we talk about climate change a lot how you are kind of processing these things and what your um, priorities are really what you think you you um, and others can be doing to act on any concerns that you might have about um, climate change working with children to produce kind of cognitive maps of their um, local communities and um, then doing mobile interviews um, where they would actually use that cognitive map um, to, use, to take me around the community. Um, and um, I do also um, do interviews and focus groups. And in my PhD research, um, I used um, uh, photos as well, photo elicitation, um, uh, to get children to be talking about their environmental concerns. And then subsequently I've worked on projects where again, we've used uh, different mapping methods and. Um, so my, I mean, my topic as a whole, I guess, is how um, how children relate to their everyday environments and um, how they relate um, their everyday experiences of their environments to um, what I term the big environmental issues, kind of facing facing children, but facing all of us. Um, so it's that kind of connection between the everyday environment and then the kind of big environmental concerns. Um, and I, yeah, I'm in geography at the moment, but I, I guess more broadly, I would call myself a social scientist. Um, but probably the methods I used are more um, sort of have been developed the most in geography. Could you talk about any light bulb moments that you might have had in your childhood or growing up that led you to your career? Hmm, that's a really good question. I mean. Yeah, I, I guess having the chance to go and spend a year in Chile before I went to university was, I think that has really started a love of travel, but I guess it's broadened my mind in a way that it couldn't have been broadened just by reading about a place or um, watching documentaries, actually going and living somewhere that was very different to the context I'd grown up in and getting very, very immersed in a particular culture. I guess this has given me a sense of people think in different ways um, and there's no right or wrong way to think about things. And um, But a lot of how people think about things is related to um, the context in which they've grown up, you know, the, the cultural norms, how much availability of, of resources and, and options and um, kind of life options and things there are. And so I guess, yeah, having that opportunity to spend a year um, overseas um, as an 18 year old was quite formative. The five elements, earth, air, space, water, fire. Could you place your work and the way you think about your work into one of the elements? <laughs> Probably earth. Um, I guess a sense of rootedness. Yeah, I think um, I am very interested. I guess what I was just saying there is I talked about 
kind of time in Chile that about how everybody has different ways of seeing the world and it, it has to do with the context in which they've grown up and I guess their roots in a particular place. Thank you, thank you. How do you personally deal with the kind of issues about climate change? And then I spent a lot of time in my PhD reading about how sort of individual behaviour change models are quite are flawed and that um, really what we need is kind of structural change, um, you know, government changing government policies, etc. Um, and obviously everybody, what everybody as individuals can do is, is quite sort of, it's constrained by the context in which they're in. So that was quite hard because I guess it sort of caused me to question a bit, well, why am I even bothering um, you know, sorting my recycling, et cetera, when actually what we really need is, is kind of structural change, or I guess as people like Naomi Klein would say, like system change. Um, but I think now I kind of, I see it more of as, as a base and um, that I do still think that we do need structural systemic change. And I think that we need to be, calling on governments for that and and it's really exciting seeing how the young uh, the youth strikes for climate have really had an impact um and I, like i do think that that those kinds of direct actions are are really important maybe not in actually changing government policy but um although that is the ultimate aim, but also just in sort of awakening the public to um, the fact that so many people care about these issues. There is a question about making data warm, but I think you've answered that really, you know, that your research methods are very user friendly. I don't know if there's anything you could add to that. Um, I guess it goes back to this kind of idea of rootedness. And I think what was good in, in the PhD, my PhD research, which was part of a larger project, was it was really interesting going to the family home and talking through um, kind of everyday life in the place where it happens, um, rather than um, just sitting in a school classroom with the children. I like, if possible, being able to do research kind of in the place where everyday life happens. Could you talk about um, beauty in your subject? Um, yeah, it's not really something, I have to say, it's not really something that I, I kind of think about that much in relation to, um, to the topics that I research on, but it is important um, because I guess it's that love of, you know, what, what's valuable to us, what's valuable to the research participants, you know, why is it concerning that, um, that they're in that valued aspects of their environments are kind of potentially being destroyed or could be. Um, I guess it's because, um, because we recognize value in them. Beauty is one of the ways that we recognize values. Um, so I think I was, when I've been to the, um, uh, some of the youth strikes for climate, um, I've been really, um, I felt most hopeful when I've seen um, different generations together, you know, grandparents who've brought their grandchildren along, or um, I remember having a conversation with a pregnant woman who was actually very kind of emotional, kind of, she just popped out during her lunch break and just wanted to see what was going on and kind of was talking about how she, you know, she, she was, um, encouraged by seeing this that the the child that she was carrying was um you know at least coming into a world where people care about these things um so I think yeah generations working together I think is that what I would most like to see happening and and not um I think the media can sometimes pit one generation against another but actually just um yeah. remembering that we are we are all in it together <laughs>